Now, Religion in the News, a report and comment on religious trends and events being covered by the media. This week's item is from Christianity Today, March 28, 2008, with a headline, Doodling with Devotion. The following are excerpts. Sybil Macbeth, a mathematics instructor by profession, doodler and dancer by avocation, has written and doodled a daring devotional, Praying in Color, Drawing a New Path to God. About three years ago, a litany of cancers struck among family, friends, and colleagues. Macbeth possessed what she calls a critical prayer list. Going to the back porch, she doodled a random shape and wrote the name of someone on her prayer list in its center. Added detail and color to the drawing, each dot, each line, and each stroke of color became another moment of time spent with a person in the center. Then she drew another shape and put another name in its middle. She embellished it with lines, dots, colors. She continued drawing until her friends and family formed a colorful community of designs. To my surprise, she writes, I had not just doodled, I had prayed. Macbeth has been leading workshops about praying in color for two years. She recommends 15 to 30 minutes, half spent in drawing and the other half in carrying the visual memories throughout the day. She trusts herself enough to experiment, mess up, and try again in prayer. She trusts God enough to guide her as she falters, succeeds, and grows stronger. Dave, you know well how we feel about prayer here at the Brain Call. We pray about everything. We have morning devotions and so on. So... You know, in one sense, I'd say, hey, whatever it takes to, to get you to pray, uh, you know, we would encourage that. But you have to draw the line with this, no pun intended. Uh, this is very similar, whether she realizes it or not, this woman, to a mandala, all right? The thing that we just talked about yeah, in our yeah. earlier segment. Right. We have now a methodology, a technique that she's trying to develop through her imagination. The question we would ask, did Paul ever do this? Was it good for Paul and Silas? Uh, this, I believe, again, it's a technique that uh, is going to create problems for whoever gets involved in it. It's a, dis- it's a distraction. I mean, what is prayer? Isn't it communication one-to-one a per- between a person and God? Well, and- Tom, let me explain about a technique. Okay. Because there are a lot of techniques and a lot of people promoting them. What's wrong? Well, what's wrong is you don't manipulate God with a technique. That's what all of these things are about, the mandala, this kind of praying. Uh, Somehow, or I don't want to offend our listeners any more than we've done in the past, but the Catholic Church has a lot of this, uh, dare I say, hocus pocus. I mean, that's a variation on the uh, on the Latin, right? Go ahead. Uh, So the robes, uh, the candles. I mean, who says that lighting a candle? will help the dead person. Mm -hmm. I was in Notre Notre Dame in Paris. Uh, Shocked me. There were more candles in front of um, Joan of Arc's statue than before the Virgin Mary's. Uh, That was a shocker. But how does that help you? Mm -hmm. And you go to Lourdes. This is what it's all about. Candles and... and, uh, you know, you know the cash registers are ringing. I mean, it is a big money, money maker. Uh, you've got plastic bottles shaped like the Virgin Mary with holy water. What, what about holy water? Uh, you know, you've been there. This uh, holy water. You know, well, how did it get to be holy? And is God impressed by this sort of thing? I don't think God is impressed at all. Jesus said, "Those who worship." The Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. Never do we find, as you you just said, Paul didn't do this. Uh, Jesus certainly didn't recommend it. Uh, Never do you find anything like this in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, David, it's it's amazing how uh, the evangelical church, now they wouldn't connect this with Catholicism or this person or uh, she wouldn't connect it with the mandala, as, as we've mentioned. But there, there really is very little difference. Even though she may be, have a sincere heart, a sincere mind of trying to encourage people to pray. But again, this is methodology. This is technique. 
It's no different than uh, uh, the word faith, people coming up with a way that you have to approach God and it's a manipulation of God and so on. It's just not biblical. And I think it's very dangerous because it now encourages people to do things that are not biblical to try and communicate with the Lord. Um, Let me make it a little more shocking. It's witchcraft. It's the idea that, you know, when the witch doctor slits the rooster's throat, sprinkles the blood in a certain pattern, mumbles a certain formula, boom, the spirits have to come through. They can be manipulated by techniques. God cannot be manipulated by techniques. It has, technique has nothing to do with truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has nothing to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with God. Is he impressed? I don't think he is. In fact, I know he isn't according to his word. Mm-hmm. Well, one more verse, Dave. Uh, this is really, although she talks about the imagination, this is a fleshly works, and the scripture says, the flesh profits nothing. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 